to take a look now at the retail space because as the battle for market share intensifies, retailers are increasingly adopting a more customer-centric view by streamlining services to appeal to consumers who are more cautious about spending. Now, the World Retail Congress, which is taking place from the 4th to the 5th of November in Johannesburg, will provide a platform to challenge current thinking, unveil the latest innovations and shape the direction of the global retail industry. Sid Vianello, independent retail analyst, will be chairing the Congress and he's with us to take a look at uh, what the most important talking points will be at this uh, Congress. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Sid. It's great to have you with us. Let's jump to modern day retail because if you're looking at the developed world, the likes of the United States, uh, you're looking at Europe, Australia, those markets very much enjo enjoying e-commerce right now and online shopping. I mean, how far are we away from that and how, what are the strides being taken here in South Africa when it comes to pushing that side of the agenda? By the way, let, let me just correct something. I'm not chairing the conference. I'm chairing one of the streams of, um, of presentations and deliberations on Tuesday. So I'm not chairing the entire conference. I wish I was, but I'm not. Um, it does, I mean, if you look at, um, if you just look at the South African retailers who've, who've come out with announcements in the past few, few weeks and more recently, just in the last few days, there's a lot of talk about e-commerce, and there's a lot of talk about retailers moving into the um, uh, moving into that e-commerce format. It's mm -hmm. clear, and I mean, I, I'm going back two, three years ago when I was sitting having lunch with Ian Moira Woolworths, and I was questioning some of um, the strategies around e-commerce, and he told me at the time, and we're not going to go into the whole story, but he told me at the time that I was wrong. I was skeptical about certain aspects, and he told me bluntly, you're wrong. It's going to happen. Unfortunately, I'm wrong. I did turn out to be wrong, and he's turned out to be right. But um, South African retailers will, with, in a way, I think, moved faster than anybody else and have certainly gotten their platform right. Um, but, I mean, if you just look at what you've been reading about the last few days, all South African retailers now... Um, I think have embraced and are embracing the concept of, of e-commerce retailing. And if we look at the African situation, perhaps given the fact that there's a lack of shopping malls and things like that mm -hmm. in the rest of the continent, um, if the major retailers are going to get their product into those countries who lack the shopping malls, and that's virtually the, the entire Africa with the exclusion of you know the, the southern region, then no doubt, I have no doubt that e-commerce is going to play a major role in getting the brands into the continent and, and creating, uh, let's say, developing the awareness, mm -hmm. which no doubt will drive further, uh, further purchasing capacity. Yeah. So it's certainly... So it, can it's I certainly inter in interrupt just for a second? Um, I used to call you Mr. Retail, and I, if I ever wanted to know where v to white T-shirts were in Woolworths, you used to say to me, right, it's in the left-hand corner of the V&A waterfront store, and there's five square metres. You used to say all that. You, were, you, were, you epitomised retail analysis to me. Do you think, this is a simple question, do you think South Africa is over retail? Because I spoke to a fund manager the other day that said there is more retail space per capita in South Africa than any other country in the world. Was he right? Lindsay, you know, I, I was quite surprised reading, reading the comments from PEPCO um, at their presentation earlier this week. And then you, you, um, you, you take that and you overlay it with some of the comments that come out of Woolworths and Fashini. And I know, we just, I, I know we're talking primarily about apparel retailers, but I must agree with you, the kind of space growth that we're talking about at the present time, um, I would have thought that by now it would slow down because we did have a massive build-up of shopping malls and there was always the talk that things would slow down and um, there'd be less space and less malls being built going forward. That doesn't seem to be happening because the retailers, believe it or not, continue to talk about six to seven. And in, I think with the PEPCO case, they spoke of, I think, 11 percent space growth in their South African business last year. Those numbers are, at the end of the day, they're actually quite horrendous because we're not seeing that kind of growth in RAND revenues, which means that like for like, same store sales, if, if these trends continue, same store sales are going to go, uh, um, in fact, they could even go negative. And if they go negative, and remember your costs are rising, that ultimately will put pressure on profitability, unless of course you can get your margins up, but margins already at a peak, so that ain't going to happen. And of course, um, 
you can read into what I'm saying. We, we may have a problem on our hands down the line. Yeah. On that point, Sid, perhaps we can move into grocery retail over here. Uh, ShopRite has been on a land grab the last few years. Vis-a-vis yeah. um, -vis pick and pay, what's your sense of these two? The pick and pay was never, going to, was never going to go bankrupt. And I mean, unlike an OK Bazaar situation of 1997. Pick and pay needed itself and needed new management to fix the business up. They found a very experienced retailer and that's exactly what he's doing. I was very impressed with what he said earlier this year when the annual report came out. We, we're not going to talk about things anymore. We're not going to tell you about these things. We're just going to, we're going to do what Anton Rupert did all the years. We're just going to put our heads, buckle our heads down and, and just do it. When we've done it, we're going to tell you. You've just seen in these results for the first time the, the, um, the differential between industry sales growth and pick and pays growth. That differential is minimal. And of course, you've now seen with the ShopRite uh, trading update on Monday, suddenly ShopRite sales growth is not much above industry growth, which, which means that effectively, whereas ShopRite and, its other, and the other competitors have had a free run for so many years and no doubt capitalized on it, pick and pay is certainly starting to come right. You're seeing targeted advertising, you're seeing the distribution coming right, and you're seeing them cutting the costs of smart shopper, presumably without losing any of the benefits and hopefully under Brasher's control, getting more benefits out of this enormous um, thing yep. which they put in place. So just one question, I mean, pick and pay has turned the corner, etc. But once they start, you know, rectifying all their problems, then it's directly competing with ShopRite again. Absolutely. Do you Absolutely. think they've got the, the management team to actually compete with ShopRite? Getting a management team right doesn't happen in one day. Sure. He has hired a lot of new people, and in the process, you would have also noticed that a lot of other people um, who clearly were not going to get on with pressure have left. Obviously, we can't forecast and say, you know, put our heads on a block and say, yes, he will have the right management team in place, but there's no reason why he cannot get that right management team in place. And I'm pretty confident that Brescia with his experience, I mean, we're talking, about, we're talking about a retailer here. We're not talking about somebody who came out of some other industry. We're talking about a man who's been in the industry for so many years mm -hmm. and a successful business as such, although it ain't successful at the present time, but that presumably happened after his departure. Um, th there's no reason why he can't get the business right and win over the, the kind of management team that he wants to work with him to get that business right. So we can't end off the conversation without bringing Grant Patterson and his team into the conversation because of course we know that MassMart uh, with Walmart's backing essentially is really trying to make inroads into Africa. They try to buy Navis, I think it is, that's the right pronunciation, uh, a K a Kenyan retailer, that failed. Um, I mean, your thoughts on how this game is playing out because Grant Patterson continues to reassure us that they're spending a lot of money on the back end, on their systems, uh, and of course we're going to have to wait to see results. How do you see this playing out. So far, all that's happened since the Walmart takeover has been the cost structure of MassMart has gone through the roof. A lot of it being Walmart associated costs, but we haven't seen any benefits at all. I don't see any improvement in sales growth or anything like that at MassMart since the Walmart um, interventions. Now, the, those interventions no doubt will take time to come through, but if we go back to what Grant said, pretty much at the time of the takeover. It's not going to be about Walmart giving them lower prices. Walmart's input costs, the basic dollar price for instance, is pretty much the same as what any other major retailer in the world would pay for similar goods from similar suppliers in China and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. But where they believe the benefits would come would be logistics and distribution and things like that. That hasn't happened yet. They have, MassMart has spent a lot of money, and I have, and I mean, Walmart is the world's biggest retailer. They do know, I guess, more about distribution and logistics than many other people. It's not yet in the system. Perhaps it will take some time. But at this point, at this moment, um, I think all we've seen is profits continuing to, uh, to deteriorate. And I remember saying to myself 
and in fact to uh, somebody at MassMart after the um, half-year presentation. MassMart still, it has four major operating divisions. Two of them are in trouble. Two of them are doing extremely well and are really well-run businesses. But two of them, in my opinion, are in trouble. And I think there's a lot of work to be done mm -hmm. internally to fix those businesses up before, um, in my opinion, before they embark upon anything in Africa. As far as Africa is concerned, Walmart's a mass mart strategy has always been to grow largely by acquisition. And the, um, the attempts they've made to buy a business in Kenya, for instance, is, e is pretty much exactly in line with the way they've done things in the past. It failed. Um, whether they would, uh, whether they would, you know, start a standalone business yeah. in Kenya, um, I think we have to wait and see. Yeah.